Greetings, my name is Monty Martin. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin. And, and we, we are, are the Dungeon, Dungeon Dudes. Dudes. Welcome to part five of our video guide to the Dungeons of Drakenheim campaign. In this episode, we are going to be focusing on how to run the individual adventure sites that are filled in the book. This is the meat of the Drakenheim campaign because it involves exploring the fantastic locations that are in the ruined city of Drakenheim. Kelly and I put a lot of time <laughs> into designing these locations and we are so excited for you to be able to share them with your players. There are over 20 different locations for your players to explore, and although they might not explore all of them, they will probably explore most of them. These adventure sites are all designed in a way that your group of players can explore them in one to three game sessions, maybe with a few exceptions such as the cathedral and the castle, but for the most part, they can be ran pretty episodically depending on the choices that your characters make. We've written the adventure sites to be as self-contained as possible so that they're easier for you to run at the table. Everything that you need to know about that location, from the plot hooks that will lead your players there, to the creatures and people that inhabit that locations, to the details of everything inside the locations, the various interactions that are possible, and the developments that might occur as a result of your player character's actions and choices at that location is contained in each respective section for an adventure site. Our goal with this structure is so that you can ask your players at the end of a game session, all right, where do you guys think you're gonna go next week? They'll be able to decide, maybe choose one or two adventure locations, like we might go to the Rat's Nest or the Chapel of St. Brenna. And that way, between then and the next game session, you only really have to focus on that section of the book to be prepared for your next game. That's our first key information for running our adventure sites, is you should always ask your players, where are you going next? It's a great idea to end a session with an idea of where they're headed in the city. Even finishing a session by laying out the map of Drakenheim and getting your players to plot their course to their next destination is a great way to end so that you have that one week to read over the adventure site of the location they're going to. If you look at our previous video on how to explore the ruins, this might give you some insight into running the random encounters and them navigating through the streets to get to the location that they're going for. Perhaps your game table is different and it doesn't always end with the players knowing exactly where they want to go next. If this is the case, it's great to sometimes have a group chat in Discord or Messages or Facebook to allow all of the players to discuss throughout the week what their plans might be moving forward. Of course, a Drakenheim campaign is an organic thing, and sometimes your players do change their mind at the last minute. It happened to me many times. If your players ever throw you for a loop, and they decide to go somewhere that you're not prepared to do, the built-in mechanic that you can use to stall for time are random encounters and exploring the city, or having the factions show up to cause some problems. This way you can kind of stall things out until the end of the session so that your players can still have fun, still have some interesting combat encounters, but that means that you can begin each adventure site fresh at the start of a new session with a little bit more prep time so that you can go through the whole site and be ready, ready to run it. I pulled these tricks many, many times running the original campaign. It really, really is easier on yourself if you get to start the session with your players at the adventure site or on their way there. So as we think about all of that, as a DM, you're going to be preparing your session for a night of adventure at one of the adventure locations in the book. What should you have prepared going into this? First of all, we have a digital map pack that has a map for every main location in the book, as well as some city streets, sewers, and other fun locations for you to explore. So downloading the appropriate map, even if you're not using this on VTT, if you're playing at home, it still might be handy to take a look at the map and use that for your preparation. Perhaps you can print it out or draw it based on the image that we've given you in the map pack. This is a great way to get prepared. If you print out a copy of the map and then read through the adventure site with the map beside you, you'll be able to take notes on what major creatures are in each location, what traps or treasures might be located in different areas, or make other quick reference notes for yourself. It's always great to have the book handy at the table, but I do find that having a few of your own handwritten notes beside a printout of the map really helps you digest the adventure site in your brain. It's a very different thing running an adventure straight out of the book versus giving this a little bit of prep work to write jot down a few notes. You only have to spend 30 minutes doing this, but the advantages that it will give you when actually running the site at your table are huge. 
This is also the perfect opportunity to pull out your tokens and miniatures, terrain if you're using it, and get to work building the part of the adventure site that is going to be explored that evening. If you're anything like me, you don't always have the appropriate mini for all of the crazy monsters that you might find in Drakenheim, but picking out the closest one and getting it ready for the evening, I often have to tell my players, okay guys, we're going to have to use your imagination here. And they always look at me and say, what? In D&D? Are you kidding? <laughs> Now, I have a very large miniatures collection, and I would often get into the habit of bringing out more miniatures than what I needed for the adventure site. And I would keep them on a side table beside my dungeon master station. I would put out extra monsters, sometimes bigger creatures, to throw my players off so they wouldn't really know what to expect. And of course, if you're using a virtual tabletop, get those tokens ready and put them on your GM layer. It might also be well worth it to roll up a couple random encounters and keeping those minis or tokens available as well. This is especially true if any of the factions are going to be launching any of their schemes or counter strikes during the adventure site. So you might want to make sure that you have a couple of the faction lieutenants and a couple of the various faction agents, miniatures or tokens ready for those, just in case you want to throw a curveball at your players. Having things like the faction agents and extra random encounters at the ready to bring in allows you to respond dynamically to your players' choices. Your players might decide to retreat halfway through the adventure site. Drakenheim is a dangerous place, after all. Your player characters might get a little in over their heads, and maybe you want to have the Hooded Lanterns or the Silver Order show up to bail them out, and now they owe that faction a favor. But as we talk about the player choices, that is one of the key elements of a Drakenheim campaign. The adventure sites that they visit and the reason for them visiting it can greatly change depending on the factions they're talking to and the goals that they have. So as we move into the overview of our adventure sites, one of the first questions is why are they going there? And we include in each adventure site a number of plot hooks that might encourage you to imagine reasons why the adventurers are asked to go there. Keep in mind that with most things in our adventure sites, these are not exhaustive lists. And if you can think of another reason why a faction might ask the party to go to the location, by all means feel free to use it. Outer city locations like the Rat's Nest or the Chapel of St. Brenna are geared towards lower level parties, and the reasons for exploring those are much more clear. They're laid out in a way where the faction agents are going to hire the party to go to these locations for a specific reason that will benefit that faction and earn their trust. As you move past the city walls and inside the city, it gets a little bit more open-ended with the structure of why they might go to these locations. This is where you're going to want to use your best judgment and the player's choices to really drive which adventure sites are going to be the main locations they're visiting. You might want to pull on the player character's personal quests and tie these into some of the adventures. When in doubt, you can always have a faction agent such as the lieutenant or faction leader come to the player characters and say, we need something from this location, we've got some intel that suggests what we're looking for is here, can you go check it out? If you are midway through the campaign and the threads are starting to get a little bit muddy and you're not sure what your player characters are going to do next session, this is always a way to bail yourself out. <laughs> Now, I think that when you are looking at the adventure sites in the overview section, oftentimes you will want to lean on the faction that your players are most allied with. If they are allied with the Hooded Lanterns, the Lord Commander might approach them and ask them to go on their next mission because they have that bond and that trust forming. However, Keep in mind that it is always a great card to play that you can actually switch up the faction and surprise the players. If you have a couple factions that are sitting in neutral territory with the players, it might be important to mix things up and give them a quest from one of these neutral factions to see how the players respond or have two separate factions offer the same quest to them and see which one they choose. Another key way that you can use these plot hooks is if your players do get in over their heads with one of the factions and are captured or in a total party kill situation, rather than murdering the party, the faction that has captured them, perhaps their enemy faction, might hold them accountable and say, well, you need to do something for me or else we will kill you. Or maybe they take something very important to the party and hold it ransom while they complete a quest for that faction. Beyond this, the overview section will also give you a general outline of the history, a little bit of the lore, and what you can expect to happen at this adventure site. The interaction section of each adventure site predominantly describes the various NPCs and creatures who inhabit the sites. It outlines their motivations, their role-playing traits, 
and different ways the party might interact with them when they explore this adventure site. This is so that the location is organic, because in many cases, the NPCs and creatures that inhabit the adventure sites don't necessarily need to be tied to any specific location within that adventure site. They can move around. For instance, the rat prints could be encountered in the burrow den of the rat's nest, but they could just be as easily encountered in any other chamber of that dungeon. Similarly, when we're looking at the Chapel of St. Brenna, we've discussed how various faction agents arrive at various points during this adventure, and this is something that is up to you to decide how that might unfold and where that might happen. Keeping the interactions dynamic is a great way to make every adventure site feel like it's responding to the actions of the player characters, and makes Drakenheim feel like a living, breathing, scary monster of a place. We also hope that the interaction sections gives you a lot of inspiration for how to respond to your players' actions and choices. Sometimes they might throw you an absolute curveball with the way they decide to respond to one of the NPCs. And so having a quick list of their personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws for some of the key NPCs that are in that location is going to allow you to take a quick look at that and see if the party is diving into maybe responding to one of their flaws or one of their ideals or bonds. Sometimes enemies can become friends and friends can become enemies all within an adventure site if you're paying attention to the interactions and the options presented there. Keep this in mind as you run the adventure site. Even if you have gung-ho player characters who are just out for combat, the interaction section keeps into your mind all the different considerations for exploration and social interaction that could still occur during the adventure. We've really put a lot of work into making sure that every adventure site has some opportunities for role-playing and exploration scenarios beyond just combat and slaying the monsters that are there. There's plenty of that if your players want that, but if you do have a very creative group that loves to interact with the characters in the various sites, they'll be able to have something for them too. And always remember, your players might do something absolutely wild, like trying to befriend the main villain of the dungeon. If your players try to befriend the Rat Prince, you can go along with it, and what's the worst that could happen? The area details is also why I find it's best to have a printout of the map beside you, so you don't have to flip across pages in the book or anything like that. That way you can look at the map, look at that, and be like, oh, that's what that, that is. It is worth giving a read-through of the area details before you run the adventure at the table. Some locations are more complex than others. There are certain locations like the Chapel of St. Brenna and the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio that have large mechanical tra traps and machinery that span the entire dungeon as one big puzzle. So it can be useful to read through these carefully so that you grasp the mechanics of how those are working. It is important to note that we haven't broken the areas up into tightly balanced encounters. And to repeat something we said earlier, but that we think is very important, is that these locations are living, breathing, dynamic spaces. So no matter what location you're going to, read the area details beforehand, have an idea of where the creatures might be located, but feel free to mix and move them around the environment as you see fit. We find that every adventure site feels more alive and is a better experience for both the DM and the players when you don't think of it as just a room full of monsters followed by another room full of monsters, but as an environment where people can move and come and go and might be performing their own tasks or planning counterattacks. Having your enemies retreat into the next room, get their friends, and prepare for an ambush might be a perfect way to move the plot along. This is actually something that your players should be thinking about when they approach any adventure site. Adventure sites like the Rat's Nest are designed as a loop to allow the inhabitants of that site to catch the player characters in a pincer and trap them in the dungeon. This is something that your players should be mindful of when they approach the adventure sites, and something that you should also consider as well when you are planning. Most adventure sites have some element of them that stack the odds against the player characters, which encourage them to think more creatively and not just go in guns blazing. If you have player characters that don't want to overthink this like this, this isn't really their style of play, it's worth the extra time to just break things apart, pull out an encounter calculator, and divide things up for them. But for players that really appreciate the challenge of a dynamic environment that's going to respond to their choices and that will result in consequences if they get in over their heads, this can be a really rewarding style of play. 
Speaking of choices and consequences, the developments section that ends each of the adventure sites is going to give you some ideas on how to move things along after they have finished with the adventure site. Oftentimes these developments will link directly to the plot hooks that were in the overview at the beginning. If your player characters went to the adventure site sent by a specific faction or a specific NPC or for a specific purpose, what is the outcome of the reason they went there? Have they pleased the faction? Have they angered another faction? Have they fulfilled their goals or have they left something hanging? All of these are important to consider as the plot moves along. If your player character has left an important monster or villain alive, where does that villain or monster go and how are they plotting their revenge? If your player characters succeeded on their mission for one faction, but there was another faction that also could have sent them there for a different reason, is that faction now upset with them and more likely to become their enemy? The developments are suggestions, and we invite you to use your judgment, logic, and reason when determining what might be the outcomes of the player character's choices and actions. But an important thing to keep in mind, while you should use your logic and reason to help you figure out the most likely thing that would have happened as a result of the player character's choices and actions, remember that people do not always respond with logic and reason. The factions in Drakenheim often behave in irrational ways. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we did this in the next video when we discuss the factions in particular. But sometimes the factions don't have reasonable responses to what the player characters did. But on the flip side, sometimes the factions don't have any way of knowing what the player characters did. And so the flow of information can be very, very interesting as well, depending on which factions are working with the players. Certain fact, some of the factions, particularly later, later on in the campaign, might even start spying on the player characters and tailing them as they explore adventure sites to figure out what they're up to so that, they, so that the player characters can't necessarily hide what went, went on in the ruins from them. And there's certain locations that it's just inevitable that once the player characters go there, the mere act of traveling to that location it sets off a bombshell amongst the factions. If your players go somewhere like the Cathedral of St. Vitruvio, or enter into the Academy Tower, or even barge into the stronghold of the Queen of Thieves, or manage to get into Castle Draken, that is something that the factions will discover. Your player characters might go to pains to conceal that information, but eventually the truth will come out. What will happen then? Our best advice as you finish up at your adventure site is to make sure that you're taking notes and keeping track of what your players decided to do, what they accomplished, what they may be failed at, and what threads they may have left hanging. The best thing that you can do as a DM is to take those threads and weave them into further stories as the plot moves through the Dungeons of Drakenheim. A Drakenheim campaign is a bit of a snowball. It might start very small with little choices that they're making, but as you move into the middle or end of your campaign, think about the consequences that those early actions might have. By keeping tabs on the developments that occur from what they've done at earlier adventure sites, you can build into more extreme situations later on in the campaign and really start to show your players the consequences of their actions. Which of the characters that they interact with might become a thorn in their side or an unexpected ally? Your player characters might have complicated relationships with NPCs like the Rat Prince, Oscar Yorin, Ryan Graymere, the Pale Man, as well as the various factions as well. Some of these neutral NPCs that they can encounter in the adventure sites can really end up being real big swings in the overall structure of the campaign, depending on how your player characters approach the interactions with them. So some of the most important NPCs to keep track of are obviously going to be the faction leaders. So stay tuned for the final Dungeons of Drakenheim guide, where we are going to dive into the different factions and how to run factions at your game table. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time in, in the, the Dungeons, Dungeons of Drakenheim. Drakenheim.